Hi, and welcome to the second part of Techniques and Methods. In the first chapter of this module, you saw an overview of the methods used in microbiome research. Today, we are going to see a case study in which we will show you how to analyze the microbial community associated with an apple. Before we start, you need to remember that every microbiome consists of microbial cells, their DNA, RNA, proteins, and metabolites. Therefore, your choice of method will always depend on what exactly you're looking for. With the apple shown here, we can visualize microorganisms inhabiting its surface or inside its tissues by using advanced microscopy. If we want to know what is the genetic makeup of the microbiome, we can use metagenomics. But if we want to know which genes are expressed by the microbiome, we can use metatranscriptomics. If we want to know what kind of proteins and metabolites are synthesized by the microbiome, we can use metaproteomics and metabolomics. If we're only interested in knowing the composition and diversity of the microbial community associated with this apple, we can simply use metabarcoding. And always remember that using multiple techniques is always a better choice. For the purpose of today's example, we are going to show you how metabarcoding is used to analyze the microbial community of the apple. Remember, metabarcoding starts by extracting the DNA from a sample. Then barcode genes are amplified and sequenced in order to identify the microbial community. In order to get the DNA out of the microbial cells, we need to break them. This is usually done by mechanical and enzymatic lysis. As shown here, a piece of the apple is placed inside a tube containing a lysis substances and a small quantity of glass beads that will help break microbial cells. Proteins present in this homogenate are precipitated and removed. The released DNA is purified through absorption to a silica-based filter. And all these steps are accelerated through centrifugation. We can detect bacteria, archaea, fungi, algae, and protists in their natural habitat by targeting their barcode genes. This allows us to study the composition of a whole community and analyze microbial networks in their natural habitat. At this point, we would like to take this opportunity to briefly explain how DNA is amplified using polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. The PCR machine sets the temperature according to the following scheme. At about 95 degrees, the double-stranded DNA denaturates into single strands. At approximately 50 degrees, the primers bind to the, their specific sites on the template DNA. And at 72 degrees, the polymerase is doing its job, synthesizing a complementary strand of the DNA. This cycle repeats usually about 25 to 40 times, copying the region of interest again and again. We can verify the success of the amplification by using gel electrophoresis, like shown here. Using a standard ladder, it can be assessed whether the amplification of the DNA has the right size or not. If this is the case, the PCR products are combined all in one tube, creating a multiplexed library ready for next generation sequencing. There are different sequencing technologies. The most common platform in microbiome research is sequencing by synthesis. First, sequencing adapters are added to the DNA fragments. The modified DNA is then loaded onto a flow cell where amplification and sequencing will take place. The flow cell contains billions of nanowells. Each nanowell contains oligos complementary to the sequencing adapter. This is needed to tether the DNA to the flow cell. Once the fragments have attached, Cluster generation begins. This step makes about 1,000 copies of each fragment of DNA and is done in a process called bridge amplification. Next, reagents including modified nucleotides with fluorescent tags are added. Since these nucleotides have reversible three primed blocker, the DNA polymerase can only add one nucleotide at a time. A camera then records the emitted fluorescence and determines what base was added according to the wavelength produced. The process continues until the full DNA fragment is sequenced. High throughput sequencing produces between millions to billions of sequences, and in the next chapter, we will dive into data analysis. Thank you for your attention.